For the past three months, uh, I've also been the senior U.S. military observer and chief of civil military coordination to the U.N. mission in Liberia. And I'll tell you what, if I never appreciated the logistics work that is done by the U.S. Army, <laughs> I certainly do now after three months in Liberia. There is about at least once a week, if not six times a week, that I slammed my fist down on the table and said, damn it, if this was a U.S.-led operation, or if this was a, uh, a NATO-led operation, I could pick up the phone and this would happen. So, okay, reality is now set in. Let's get in and we'll try to figure out how to make this work anyway. Uh, I have done that. I was also, before that, uh, I worked at uh, the Pentagon. I'll go back to there, unfortunately, to the five-sided prison, uh, where I work uh, stability, reconstruction, support issues at the interagency level there. Before that, uh, I worked actually with Bob Curtis. Bob was in, in Washington, and I was over in Iraq as the chief of staff for the what originally started as the program management office and became the project and contracting office. Since I came back from there also, I met Doug Brooks and uh, stayed in close contact with IPOA since then. But let's talk about logistics and chaos. Logistics, you know, I, I, I am actually a War College graduate, so I knew how to open up the book and find the definition for logistics after 28 years of commission service. Logistics is the science of planning and executing the movement and maintenance of forces. For conventional military operations, this means combat troops who will close with and destroy the enemy with fire and maneuver. For humanitarian actors, these forces are people, whether volunteers or professional staff, who will provide aid and comfort to beneficiaries. For the purpose of my presentation, I will use the second model and a fictitious international NGO, which we will call Feed the Hungry, or FTH. <laughs> yeah, I wish I invented that, but I didn't. I stole it from somebody else. Now, FTH wants to respond to a crisis in Ultimatulia, okay, where the government collapse has exacerbated widespread famine throughout the region. To do this, FTH must gather material and people, move the material and people to the region, support their people, and maintain the equipment in Ultimatulia while there, and find facilities to operate from. Okay? We need to think about this. The military knows this. Not every NGO deploying to a theater understands this. First slide, please. Or next slide. This describes the various major logistic areas of material, personnel, services, and facilities. Now, FTH, unlike some NGOs, is a well-established INGO with a successful track record in previous natural disasters. They have professional logistics staff that understands what is needed to project people and material into an affected region, to sustain them while there, and to distribute the assistance to the beneficiaries. By the way, does everybody know what I mean by beneficiaries? I've been drinking blue Kool-Aid for, th for three months now, okay? <laughs> Beneficiaries the people that were actually assisting in a humanitarian assistance operation. The problem here is that, like in so many places today, the situation in Ultimatulia is not a simple natural disaster, but a complex emergency. Next slide. The breakdown in government authority has been accompanied by internal conflict requiring the response by humanitarian agencies, as well as international military and other security forces. It is not only the emergency, but the logistics of responding to the emergency that have become complex. Logistics seeks predictable outcomes to support, uh, to support operations intended to restore order. Chaos theory describes how seemingly simple inputs can result in random and seemingly unpredictable outcomes. The problem is that in modern contingency operations, Logistics must, must not only support operations intended to overcome chaos, but that the logistics environment itself lacks order and the complexity of this environment can yield unpredictable support to operators in the theater. Simple inputs, such as the requirement to have access to 1.5 gallons of potable water per person per day are affected by outside influences. These include competition for locally available water from other humanitarian actors, the international military force, and other armed groups. 
Even bringing it in from outside results in competition for port facilities, storage, transportation to your staff, and securing the water from theft or wastage. Next slide. Okay, so here we have Feed the Hungry. They have to run uh, everything through a port. And the port has a capacity of 1,000 tons a day. It's the only port in country. Okay, I didn't make that up. That's actually uh, the maximum capacity on a good day for uh, the Freeport Sierra Leone. Feed the Hungry needs to have, what did I write there? 32 metric tons a day to supply their people. Okay, click. Ah, but other people need to have stuff coming in through that same port. UNHCR, UNICEF, World Food Program, UN uh, Development Pro uh, Program, which is a big four for the UN. Military force has to have a big chunk. And I just named a few other uh, NGOs that are operating in the area. Four is not enough. Right now in Liberia, there's almost 100 international NGOs all trying to run their logistics support through the same small pipeline. Oh, and by the way, I didn't mention the normal logistics supplies that need to come through that port just to sustain the regular civilian infrastructure, the commercial industries, the civilian population, and so on. Now, the easy answer of 32 metric tons per day to a port capacity of 3,000 tons is becoming very difficult to maintain now. The military force probably won't have a problem. They'll just bowl their way through and establish priorities taken. So I'm not talking to the military side today. They'll get their supplies. It's everybody else, not the peacekeeping force, but the other actors who will actually make the peace that are having logistics problems. And those are the people that most of you here in the room will be either working as part of or trying to support. Next slide. Coordinating the different actors, all of whom, after all, are at least theoretically working towards the same end. From that is the relief and recovery of the region, is not an easy task. These are not your team members, okay? You want to think of it that way. These are your competitors, okay? These are the people who are also trying to use the same limited resources to supply their means towards their end. Is it a common means, the relief and recovery of the area? Yes. Do they really, do these other NGOs really care whether FGH falls apart and dies? No, okay. Because they're also in competition not only for the logistics, but for funding sources back in the United States. So the more that they get to do, the less that FGH gets press uh, and reliability, the more that they have of that share of the pot. So they are in fact your competitors, okay. Now, as chief of civil military operation, my job is to get these competitors to start acting like partners. Okay. Among my job, okay. But all of these people, civil population people, we're here to support, okay? They're actually your competitors too for, logist for the logistics that you need. Chaos, okay, which is gonna produce random results here because it's no longer the predictable logistics pattern we were hoping, is closely related to the Clausewitzian concept of friction. Okay. Let's see if I got the, let's see if my friction worked and the next slide comes up properly. <laughs> Very good, okay. Although Clausewitz's definition describes the mechanism whereby complex systems inhibit achieving expectations, which can be planned for, friction does not explain why things sometimes go better than planned. That's what chaos does. Friction, which we can see in action, describes why one plus one plus one will never quite equal three. In fact, so most of the time will come closer to two. In chaos, one plus one plus one can sometimes yield five, but without ever actually being able to predict the outcome. Next slide. Okay, this is Ultima Thulia, rather, rather simple operation. And there is Feed the Hungry operating at, at a refugee center. Okay. Now, for example, you're competing through that small, that real tight uh, channel. Look, one re reliable road, maybe two if you're lucky to get to where you want to go. 